360 kick too. Yeah. Most extraordinary experience doing it. I said it was like being in a painless operation. Florin really is a brilliant writer and his first direction, quite remarkable. And he keeps saying, um, excuse me for my English, but his English is amazing. So there's, there's nothing that he misses. It's working out incredibly well. It's really, I love coming to work every day. Dad, it's me. The story all takes place in one place, but this one place has to become many different places. So here's an opportunity to do something really interesting and how do we do it and how do we make it work? I'm telling you, I don't need her. I don't need her or anyone else. I can manage very well on my own. <sighs> Wasn't easy to find her, you know. Oh. This isn't easy. Within the stage production, they were working firmly on one set and they made subtle changes to that set and that took you into different parts of Anthony's mind. Here we can really do that. And where are these from? Shall I get you some tea before she arrives? The narrative is like a labyrinth and you are, as part of the audience, in the middle of this labyrinth and you have to try to find a way to get out of it. Where's the painting? What painting? And I think it takes you a while as an audience member, and certainly reading the script and seeing the play, it takes a while for you to understand that is what you're seeing. And to use the room as a part of the narrative, meaning that we are all the time in an apartment, but the apartment changes all the time, as if it was like one of the characters of the story. And I thought it was a, a way to travel and at the same time to stay in the same room, which is like a part of the disorientation I wanted to create for the audience. What is this nonsense? What are you talking about? Then it's transformed into Anne's flat. This isn't your flat, Anthony. Sorry? And we wanted to feel very different, but the same, which is the tricky thing, because the brief is that all the architecture stays the same, the flat stays the same, the doors, the windows, but the colour changes and the furniture changes. My flat? What about it? Well, it's changed. Do you think? Yes. And those uh, chairs, for instance, uh, that, uh, who, who put them there? Florian didn't want it to be gloomy um, because it would tell the wrong story. That's a key thing. Are you taking your medication? Then we'll go get dressed. I had this approach that I thought of, of dying light. For a lot of the scenes in the main rooms, whether it be the dining room or the living room, the, the sun that's coming through the windows, even though we shot in the studio, is always very, very low. But it's there and it's a constant presence. The discussions were about the camera having a simple method of recording it. So it wasn't overly complicated. I think if you're overly complicated with the way you told the story with the camera, I think that, that would throw it. The look of the place, the design in general, has got a feel which is very distinct, and I think that it benefits from being French-English. There's just something slightly different about it. It sets it apart slightly. My thing with costume for this film was that it, it shouldn't shout, and it, it shouldn't be about the costume, but the costume should be, the characterization should be a given. Um, we should just believe these characters are who they are, and that should feel very natural and be unnoticeable. Laura came by, didn't she, Dad? Laura came by just now to see us. Oh? The palette's quite considered. Um, I wouldn't say it's stripped back massively, but there is um, some control within it. I wanted to get rid of pattern and fussiness, and I wanted to get rid of anything that was too organic or floral. You up already? It's very sort of thematic, his costumes. We started with this world of greens, um, quite tonal, textural cardigan, um, a, a jacket, a sort of really well-loved jacket. And as we take him through the film, we sort of slightly bleach the colour away. So we're losing the warmth from his beautiful dressing gown, that sort of really deep sort of burgundy. And his palette sort of becomes more pale and he ends up in these blue pyjamas. And by the final scene, he's in a T-shirt, as sort of vulnerable and unstructured as you can get. Can you take one? No, I was talking about... Anne. Anne. Florian writes parts that actors can inhabit quite freely. In other words, they're not prescribed by the contours of the part. 
and so actors absolutely love being in his plays. He's incredibly generous, so if the feeling takes you somewhere else, he's fine with it. Um, rather than, I'm sorry, sorry, actually there was a, I think we'll find there was an A there, and, which is slightly irritating, and, you know. Uh, but he's, he's absolutely wonderful. He's a really lovely man to work for. Very good. Okay, move on. Yeah, good. Very good. This is what we've had throughout. Everybody who's involved in this, whether it's key crew or cast, have all said yes on the basis of meeting Florian and the script, and it's just irresistible. He surrounded himself with this astonishingly sensitive and empathetic crew, so the other stuff is taken care of by a brilliant uh, DP and, and sound, and everyone's just really sensitive to capturing the performance. Now what? As every good director does, he's chosen his team extremely well. And, and, and has great confidence in them. We're, we're doing very few takes, maybe two or three, sometimes only one, when he, he knows what he wants. I think maybe because he knows his way around the place so well he, and he's thought it through for so long. He knows exactly what he's doing. He's, if you watch him now on the set, you could absolutely believe he's been doing this for 20 years. Yes, tap dancing was my specialty. Really? You seem surprised. Yeah, a little bit. There is a sense of play and freedom in the way that we're doing it. We're doing the script as written, but he, um, he has a, a lightness and an easiness, and the atmosphere that he's created is very playful and very easy. Yeah, it, it, would, it would be good, yeah. Um, he's the loveliest person to work for, and also he's so decisive, which is really nice, because you know you could do one scene uh, 16 different sizes from all sorts of different angles until you sort of just don't never want to say those words ever again. But if you, you do it and you're doing it with Anthony Hopkins and things, so it's it's an absolute treat anyway. But he goes, yeah, we've got it. That's exactly what I wanted. Good, perfect, thank you.